conditions being experienced in recent times bring along havoc to people and communities. The impact of unfavorable weather conditions to Ghana's building and road infrastructure is an emerging concern. In this piece, Kofi Edu Donfe turns attention to the construction of roads and bridges in Ghana in the face of global climate change phenomenon. A road is an important infrastructure that connects people and communities together. The rapid construction of roads and bridges in Ghana has brought relief to many, especially farmers in rural communities who otherwise would have been stranded or cut off from bigger cities. Extreme weather conditions being experienced in recent times have wreaked havoc not only to people but also communities. But the impact of unfavorable weather conditions to the country's building and road infrastructure is an emerging concern. What has climate change got to do with the construction of roads and bridges in Ghana? I sought answers. Extreme weather is one of the most dangerous threats to the planet, according to the Global Risk Report 2019 by the World Economic Forum. Now, in 2017, close to 40 million people suffered acute food insecurity because of climate-related risks. Now, disruptions to goods and services due to environmental disasters are up by 29% since 2012. Scientists say climate change makes extreme weather more likely and the impact could be devastating. Ghana has experienced excessive rains in recent years. The situation has led to flooding, hundreds being displaced and water bodies overflowing their banks. The agricultural sector has greatly been affected. Road infrastructure has not been spared. Some bridges have totally collapsed, while others have caved in partially. Ashanti Regional Director of Highways, Engineer Christian Inti, acknowledged the stress on road infrastructure due to the extreme weather conditions. The best uh, roads are concrete roads. If it's done well, then to take you 40, 50, 60 years, then you go and sleep. Uh -huh. But that is, uh, you have to put it side by side, the available resources. And that's why we are not able to go into it the way. But if you go to the Tema area, I think they are changing the scope. The scope. They, are now, they are no more using uh, bitumen, bituminous uh, surfacing. They are using either pavement blocks or concrete. And that can stand, with, uh, withstand the, the stresses. Ghana has a huge budget in building road infrastructure across the country including the construction of culverts and bridges. The Ministry of Roads will this year 2019 undertake 42,600 kilometers of routine maintenance activities on trunk, feeder and urban road networks. But there is cause for worry when the investment is fast eroded because the roads do not last their lifespan. Senior Minister Yao Osafo Mafo believes an effective audit service where auditors expand their scope to revenue audits will help seal revenue leakages. Somebody makes a road 
and the road has been designed to specifications. When we say that, it means that in the design of the roads, they have agreed that there should be this level of compassion, there should be that level of sand or stones, there should be that level of asphalt. It's very specific. The design spells everything out. It decides to do 50% of these specifications, but collect the full money, the full revenue. There, the government loses millions. Not finding some additional error in something and making so much noise about it. There, the, the state loses millions and nobody talks about it. Somebody's paid twice what he's supposed to pay based on the work done. And who is to check him? The Auditor General says his outfit will embark on a procurement and construction audit to ensure value for money in the execution of government projects. Contractors who fail to adhere to specification will be sanctioned. We shall embark on construction audit and we are almost there. I'm told they are just about awarding the contract to get the equipment for us. If we get the equipment, Honorable Senior Minister, assuming this building, if it is for government, we will come and check the size, the height, the width, everything, <laughs> including testing the wall. <laughs> And we are also buying the equipment which we have not yet bought is the asphalt coiling machine where we can take samples of the asphalt on the road and see whether the thickness is the 8 inches which is in the bill of quantity or it is 4.04. Uh, 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 four. We want to use technology to challenge abuse of public funds. That was put together by Kofi Edu Donfe uh, in Kumasi, the Bureau Editor of Media General. He joins us in the studios today via Skype. Hello, Kofi. You're welcome. How are you doing? Very good, Christophe. Thanks awesome. for having me. Awesome, awesome. Um, what inspired you to um, do this documentary? Well, I, I think uh, the climate phenomenon is something that is global. Um, in Ghana, over uh, the past decade or so, there's been a lot of, a lot of talk on the need for us to be climate resilient. But mm. oftentimes, uh, when we talk about climate change, the emphasis is on the agricultural and uh, food security sectors. Mm. But um, I was uh, rather looking at some of the areas under the country's um, uh, climate policy. And one of the major um, policy areas is climate resilient in the infrastructure sector. Mm. So I was rather trying to draw our attention to the fact that um, it's not only the agriculture and food um, sectors that are really affected by, by climate change, but there are other sectors of the economy. In fact, almost every aspect of the economy is affected by this phenomenon called climate change. Uh, so the focus was to look at the road and um, bridges sector to, to really see how we can build climate resilient infrastructure going into the future. Okay, good one. You raised a lot of issues in there. But putting this piece together, did you encounter any challenges? Well, I think um, the challenge has to do with the availability of uh, research to look at how uh, the country can really go into the future, um, looking at how we can access data to see the impacts uh, that we are currently experiencing regards climate change. You realize that um, we've been complaining as a country that um, we need to have some good roads and bridges being built. At the same time, the government is currently building a lot of roads across the country, but most of these roads do not last their lifespan. Oftentimes, mm. we, we blame the contractors for doing shoddy works and all that. But the issue had to do with the other aspect that the country is not um, looking at, how climate change is really affecting. As we speak now, we are in September, and the rains are here with mm. us. And um, we are asking ourselves, is it the time for the rains to come? Mm. At the same time, some roads are being constructed, some bridges are being constructed. What are the likely impacts of the rains? 
at the same time that we are building this um, infrastructure. So availability of data is a major challenge that I, I foresaw. Um, and, and it was very clear um, on the field that we don't have the data to back how climate change is affecting our infrastructure sector. Okay, so do you think that um, we are paying enough attention to climate change? Ah, it's, it's a very difficult question, I must say. Mm. Uh, on the grounds, uh, you don't find much um, being done, even though Ghana is signatory to uh, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Mm. And um, in our um, nationally determined contributions, which we sent to the um, UN as part of our climate uh, readiness, mm -hmm. we're supposed to raise some amount of money. That's about um, $22 billion dollars for our climate mitigate, mitigation and adaptation activities. But if you go to the grounds and talk to local communities, uh, farmers, especially people in the coastal areas, generally you don't see what we are doing in terms of adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, what the country is really doing in terms of um, building for the future. You don't find that on the ground. So. I would say that we have the right policy frameworks with mm -hmm. the signatories to the international um, documents on climate change, but on the grounds, a lot more needs to be done so that we do not suffer uh, this phenomenon called climate change uh, in the future. Already we are vulnerable, I must say. We are very vulnerable. Mm. So we need to have some um, strategic adaptation strategies being implemented okay. for, for the country to, to really um, see a good future. Okay, so um, essentially, what's, what exactly are you trying to achieve um, with this documentary? So th th there are two things that um, I, I sought to achieve. First, to draw the public awareness to the fact that the phenomenon called climate change is a reality. Mm -hmm. That um, as a country, we must accustom our, our thinking to that mm. this is something that is already dawning on us and we need to be aware of the impacts of climate change. And secondly, with this particular piece to let uh, duty bearers, interest groups, uh, researchers, and all other parties be aware of the fact that there is likely to be a devastating impact of climate change on our roads, um, infrastructure. And therefore, this is the very time that we need to start thinking how best we can build for the future. If we are giving contracts out, how do we factor in climate related issues? For instance, how resilient would the materials be if um, the, 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 the sun should be that high, if mm -hmm. the rain should be that massive? Mm -hmm. How can we ensure that the contractors have this climate aspect incorporated mm -hmm. into their, their contracts so that we, we really plan for the future and are not found wanting um, when we invest so much into this sector and um, uh, it doesn't really last um, the, lifestyle, the lifespan that we expect as a country. Have you seen any results so far? If so, um, kindly tell us um, what these results have been. Well, um, I think for the past um, two days that we, we've been airing this, I've received a number of calls, people okay. saying that they never thought that um, climate could really be a factor to um, some of the roads that get deteriorated yeah. so quickly um, when, when they are built. Oftentimes, um, we blame the contractors. Of course, they also should know um, how the weather conditions are currently yeah. and how they are changing to factor this in. But you can't um, always uh, blame them anyway because these are also natural um, phenomena that is impacting on the road sector. Yeah. So there is that awareness that indeed, if we are to uh, go into a strong economic development, we need to start thinking about factoring climate change issues into our built environment. And that's, that's what is positive for me, that the awareness okay. being created is high, and I'm okay. expecting that it will lead to research and policy um, impact as well. Okay, so quick advice to all stakeholders. Well, all interest groups, including the public, um, we, we, we cannot run away from climate change. Mm. It's, it's, it's something that is already with us. Um, what you need to do as an individual is to think at how we can also contribute to uh, the mitigation and at the same time look at ways and means to adapt 
if you are building, look at how, as an, even as an individual, what materials are you using to build? Is it that, can you go for, for instance, bricks instead of the usual blocks, mm -hmm. which of course, people are already complaining of some dampness, even if you are on the mountains. Uh, you build and the, 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 the structure develops some damp, and you wonder where that, that, that problem is coming from. It's all because of the changes in the weather um, pattern, which is unexpected. So we should all accustom our minds to the fact that climate change is real, and um, as individuals, as a country, as policy makers, as decision makers, we should attune our minds to the fact that everything that we do, from energy to agriculture to infrastructure, we should factor mm. climate change into our policy, our planning, and everything we do as a country. Very important. Thank you so much, Kofi, for joining us via Skype today. Kofi Edu Domfe is the bureau editor um, in Kumasi, bureau editor of Media General. I've been speaking to him on climate change and infrastructure in Ghana.